Hello there, my YouTube chums. Today you find me down in the Fortescue Towers arcade room, playing Jurassic Park, the rail shooter created by Sega in 1994. <laughs> there is uh, there's something wrong with my cabinet's coin box. It seems to think it's full of coins and is automatically giving me continues. There, how annoying! <laughs> to get still. What's one to do, eh? When in Rome? Or rather, when in Island Nubla? <laughs> Here, one straps oneself in to one's jeep and blasts away at every prehistoric pest that crosses one's path. <laughs> Playing this game reminds me of the time when Bunty. Arabella and I found ourselves in a similar predicament. It all started with a fax on the special telephone left for us by Agent Johnson, the man from MI5. The message read simply, Stand by, I'm on my way. Uh, perhaps there are more alien invaders, offered the bunty. Real ones this time, he added, rather than just Malty's drone. All speculation was halted by the chiming of the doorbell, whereupon Arabella ushered Agent Johnson into the drawing room. Let me explain what all the hoo-ha is about, <laughs> said Agent Johnson. We all listened dutifully. Oh, well, continued Agent Johnson, settling himself into an armchair. After the incident we now call Drone One, you have proved yourselves reliable, faithful, and discreet servants of the Crown. And the Crown is calling upon you once again. A free song of anticipation sizzled in the air. This operation is even more classified than the last. The technology we are dealing with, whilst experimental is extremely advanced and we cannot allow it to become known to our enemies. You mean the red peril? asked Bunty. Any of the perils, Mr. Norris. We nodded solemnly, pledging to keep our counsel. Agent Johnson continued. Her Majesty's government is in dire need of a dodo. Or Ideally, a pair of dodos, male and female, in order for the dodo to flourish once more. But why is there a need for the dodo? Why the British government? Why us? Quizzed Arabella. In the current climate of gloom and doom, we need a success story outside of the political and cultural arenas. We need something unique. And who else would resurrect the dodo other than we wacky Brits? <laughs> Agent Johnson sat back. With a luck, that said, argue with that logic if you can. <laughs> he went on. The dodo is lovable and cuddly. Bringing back such a creature would not only boost national morale, it would put us back on the world stage with the greatest ever feel-good factor. Uh, we've beat an extinction story. <laughs> There's only one problem that I can see, pointed out Arabella. S since they're extinct, where would we find one? Ah, <laughs> I thought you would want to know that, said Agent Johnson. He spoke into his cuff, and a lorry bearing the legend Hopper's Magical Rancho piled up on the drive. Oh, I love magic, mystery and illusion exclaimed Bunty, just as the side of the van dropped to reveal the strangest looking thing this side of Malty Milburn's garage. We hurried outside to take a closer look. It seemed to be a kind of walk-in wardrobe made of some sort of glass material. And inside, fashioned in gleaming gold, was a concoction of cogs, levers and knobs. Bunty gasped. <gasps> Is that what I think it is? <laughs> well, that all depends on what you think it is, Mr. Norris, said Agent Johnson, with a playful twinkle in his eye. It's a thing of myth, of legend, of impossibility. It's the whisper of a rumour, the echo of what could be. It's the... it's the... fabled time-hopper. 
It is <laughs> the most advanced piece of technology yet devised. So, hush hush, even I don't know about it. <laughs> we all looked at Agent Johnson, perplexed. Just a little joke I like to make. <laughs> this will be your means of transport to the past. But it's such a wonderful thing, said Bunty. Why don't you use it all of the time? To put right what once went wrong, and so on. No, but we do, Mr Norris, we do, said Agent Johnson. Do you remember when the egg and spoon race was our national sport? No, because it never was. Or was it? Anyway, back nor forward to the present, as it were. I still don't understand, said Arabella. Why us? The thing with the time hopper, you see, it's temperamental. We say Elizabethan England, and off it hops to revolutionary France. We say far future, and away it catapults itself to next Tuesday. So, whenever and wherever the hopper lands, the catch all cover story is that it is inconsequential fairground attraction. A harmless sideshow, if you will. <laughs> ah, chipped in Bunty. So, if we're caught near to the hopper, we pretend we're performing artistes, and the hopper one of our props. A, a troop of troubadours if we land during the Middle Ages, a trio of travelling players if we land during the Renaissance, and YouTubers setting up for a stunt if we land next Tuesday. Bunty frowned. But won't that mean we'll need to take an assortment of costumes with us to blend in to wherever we may land off course? No, that would be what other people would need. But you, said Agent Johnson, gesturing to us all, are disguised enough in yourselves. Nobody would believe such a group of lovable eccentrics would exist in real life, outside of someone's imagination. Agent Johnson let us digest this information before continuing. But with a bit of luck and a fair wind, you will most likely be in the land of the dodo before brunch. Where is that exactly? 16th century Mauritius. Oh, thereabouts. When you have the bird in your possession, the big red button will bring you home <laughs> with a bit of luck and a fair wind. Happy hopping! And with that, Agent Johnson ushered us into the time hopper. The journey in the time machine was brief but tumultuous. We were buffeted about the ocean of time like a pleasure boat in a tempest. Bunty assured us that this was normal, but we were all relieved when the ship at last came to a standstill and we could throw open the doors and step outside. I would like to say there are no words to describe the feeling of planting footsteps in a time that is not one's own, of smelling the flora and fauna of the before, of hearing sounds that have long since passed. But there were, and those words came from Bunty. We are not in Mauritius in the 1500s. There will come, Bunty. <laughs> How can you have come to that conclusion so soon? The reasons are threefold stated Bunty. One, the climate is wrong. Two, the flora is wrong. And three, that. We followed Bunty's finger, and there, looming down at us with a roar that could wake Rip Van Winkle, was what could only be described as the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Run! shouted Arabella, unnecessarily. And run we did, scrambling over boulders, ducking under undergrowth, and hiding behind trees, away from those stampeding feet and terrifying teeth. Eventually, we dared to look back. The Tyrannosaurus Rex had gone. We ran to the spot near to the edge of the cliff where the hopper had landed. But where was it? It had been knocked over the cliff edge, followed by the once deadly, now dead, dinosaur. Oh, this had left us in a perilous pickle. How to retrieve the time hopper? We stood, stunned and staggered by our predicament, 
and before panic could give way to logical thought, from out of the trees emerged another Tyrannosaurus Rex. Was this the mate of the first, out to avenge its deceased partner? Oh, but that wasn't all. Above us squawked a dark cloud of pterodactyls. They began to circle us their next meal. Oh dear, I fear the time hopper had brought us to the end of time. Our time. We were in Jurassic jeopardy. And I said as much to Bunty. Well, Bobbity, uh, the presence of the Tyrannosaurus Rex suggests that we are actually in the Cretaceous era. It would therefore be more accurate to say that we are up a Cretaceous Creek without a paddle. Well, whichever era we're in, Bunty, we're completely buggered. Look! cried Arabella, remarkably. The pterodactyls had stopped tormenting us and were, in fact, flying away. They've been scared off by the T-Rex, observed Bunty. And Bunty was right. The T-Rex was growling with all its might and, it seemed, shaking a fist at the birds. Now we looked at it more closely, there was something rather odd about this Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was slower and shorter and looked handmade. And it was wheezing. I don't believe it, blurted Bunty. Greetings! It's only me, I mean Cognito. <laughs> it was none other than our old sports and science master, Malty Milburn. Malty? Started Arabella. I thought you were off on an off-grid fishing trip. Well, yes, uh, uh, yes I was, said Malty. But the queerest thing happened. I was just sitting there, minding my own business, when everything went a bit curly-whirly and kaleidoscopic. Next thing, I and my fishing rod landed here, months ago. You left only yesterday to go fishing, I said. Bunty was hopping from fat to fat in excitement. I believe you've been scooped up in a wormhole, Mr Milburn, sir. The time anomaly not only whisked you off to the furthest edge of the far-flung past, but also made time pass differently for you. What was months to you has been just a few hours for us. Well, I've used the time wisely. I've made myself quite a man cave. <laughs> I've caught some very peculiar but tasty fish. And using bits and pieces from my tent and camping equipment, I made this very similitude of a Tyrannosaurus Rex to blend in. We stared intently at Malty's peculiar attire, trying to make sense of it. Indeed, such was the befuddlement of Malty's disguise that the pterodactyls had flown off in a flap of confusion. <laughs> yes, Malty. And it's also just what we need for next year's village pantomime, said Arabella, by way of compliment. That's if we ever get back to Fortescue Village. We've lost our only means of getting home. Arabella went on to explain our predicament. Oh, no worries in that regard, Malty assured us confidently. I've been using vines for all sorts of wheel and pulley systems. We'll have your time hopper hold back up before you can say Micropachycephalosaurus. Ha! And Malty was true to his word. Within the hour, we were up and running again, thanks to his ingenious prehistoric pally system. Ah, well, mused Bunty. We might not have our dodos, but at least we'll get home in one piece. What's that about dodos? inquired Malty, and Bunty explained our quest. I don't know about dodos, said Malty, but what about dino dodosauruses? <laughs> he winked at us, then whistled, and out of the ferns waddled two flightless dodo-esque birds. I trained Dick and Doris here not long after I arrived. A man would go crazy without company, and these two are just the ticket. <laughs> Malty scooped up his prehistoric pals and stepped into the time hopper. Right, let's get home. I'm gasping for a glug of Flacker's ruin. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like me, tell your chums. Until next time, this is Lord Bobberty Fortescue saying Toodle Pipsy and 
Tempest Fugit, my YouTube chums.